Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mike Colleen at MikeColeen.com. Alright, so first of all I want to make an announcement real quick. Just as a remind <coughs> excuse me, as a reminder, although I don't make the videos on this YouTube channel anymore, uh, this is originally how this channel started. I am an elite dating and relationship coach with some new discoveries on how men and women communicate differently, how we receive love in the opposite way romance and a right brain form of female seduction that women really really love so go ahead and take a look at my website go to mike colleen m-i-k-e-k-o-l-l-i-n.com so just a little bit about my background i started out studying psychology uh, in college at chico state and then arizona state and where dr robert cialdini wrote the book influence after that, I fell in love with Tony Robbins' work for years, and then I went off and I trained in uh, neurolinguistic programming, that's NLP, and Ericksonian hypnosis, and I learned um, a form of energy healing with a Hawaiian form of energy healing, HUNA. Now, I did go to Hawaii, studied that for, did a five-week training out there, but I also did a five-week training in Southern California, East Coast, etc. I did a lot of training for 12 years on these newer arts, NLP, Ericksonian hypnosis, timeline therapy, also Reiki, Huna, pranic healing, um, and a couple other things, HNLP. Uh, there's a lot of stuff I studied and just want to give you a little bit of a background. There's, there's a lot more to it, but I'll leave it at that for now. Another thing about my background is I was a national champion in kickboxing, state champion in boxing, wrestling champion, football, and also racing for many, many years. Okay, so nutrition was a huge part of my life and I've studied it. Um, not, I did have some classes in college, but not enough to say like I really got, got a college education on that, but I've studied it on my own and also with other training partners and athletes that I worked with for years. Now, being a very highly intuitive person, one of the things you learn, especially being an athlete, you really pay attention to how foods affect you emotionally and physically uh, after you eat the foods or the vitamins or the protein powders or whatever, because you're like, well, does this work? Is it helping me? Is it making it worse? Etc. So the question that I had because of some experiences uh, over the years with people I met at the gym or clients, etc., was, so here's the question was, does the keto diet attract narcissists or do narcissists attract the keto diet? Now, I've definitely done some research on this diet because of the extreme experiences I was having with people that were on this diet, uh, me, in, including some clients from way back. I'm talking, oh God, five, five, six years ago, a long time ago. And... Um, I tell you what. Let me let me read this off first. So let's 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 read this. So it says a ketogenic diet is a very low carbohydrate pattern of eating designed to force, keyword force, the body into ketosis, a survival mode of fat metabolism. So right there. Um, now here. Okay. So because of my background and my training and the discoveries I made in male to female communication for dating relationships that left right brain connection and then there's an, a lower reptilian brain which controls this artery that feeds uh, or fuels blood up into the larger human brain. If you're in a state of fear, it lowers it and essentially it turns off your right brain and it restricts your left brain functioning. So what that leaves you is it leaves you in your reptilian brain, which is the instinctual fight or flight brain. It is a very, it's, it's the animal brain. It's just like being a chimpanzee. Now there's a video that I've made recently about Joe Rogan talking about how this man had a chimpanzee and then how the police or whoever said, hey, you can't keep one of those things because they're dangerous. They're five times stronger than humans and they can, they have an absolute rage about them. So long story short, he had to turn this monkey or chimpanzee in and one day he shows up with a birthday cake because it was his birthday. He, he was allowed to visit it, but it had to stay in the cage with all these other chimpanzees that were in cages. Well, what happened is the other chimpanzees got jealous. They got, no, no that's not even the right word. They got enraged. They got pissed off because from their perspective, like, oh, so you didn't bring me a birthday cake? And they take it as a personal attack, like an actual physical attack, like you're doing something to them. 
Now, let me remind you, the lower reptilian brain is the same brain that the chimpanzees are using. There is no higher right brain cognitive functioning of thinking like, well, you know, it's this guy's birthday. It's not a personal attack. They, none of that happens. That doesn't function on that lower reptilian brain. So what happened is this guy shows up to visit the uh, chimpanzee, you know, a week or two weeks or whatever, just later on. And the other chimpanzees ha had such revenge in their mind that they figured out how to get out of the cages. So when that guy showed up, they broke out and they killed him. They, it was brutal. They bit his hands off, his feet, his penis, and they, they ripped his face off. And Joe Rogan went on to say is the reason why they do this is they're basically taking everything away from you that you would, how did you say this, that you need in order to get what you want or to survive, to function as a, a, a being. And I was, and I think he even used the word dehumanize you. And that's exactly what a narcissist do. They, they go after you, your friends, your family. They try to turn everyone against you. They try to get you fired. They, they do everything they can to dehumanize you, to humiliate you, to shame you. So the reason why I'm making this video is because I had noticed about five, six, and seven years ago that everyone I met that was on this diet, like, so okay, in the beginning, I didn't know they were on the diet. It was a client of mine that just absolutely would flip out over the dumbest, littlest, simplest things. And I'm like, like what the hell's going on here? You know, what's going on here? Let's do some breathing. Let's take a break. And I was constantly trying to calm this person down. And then he said, well, I'm on this special diet and it, it kind of makes you edgy. I'm like, well, what diet is that? Because well, it's called the keto diet. I'm like, what's that? And so, and, he, and then he explained low carbohydrates and everything, et cetera, et cetera. I was like, oh, okay. So I tried to convince him, at least for the rest of the course, can you, you know, just eat a regular diet so you can calm down a bit? And that actually pissed him off. And, and he, no, I'll be fine. It was just really just adamant, just like what I call lockdown. And so then about nine months later, I met another client and, and it was the same effing thing. And I, I looked at them and it's like, are you on the keto diet by chance? They're like, yeah, how'd you know? And I was like, oh, Jesus. Because it became the, the signs of social behavior became really clear. Like this is not normal. So then I met another one who then introduced me to a bunch of other people and they were all on this diet and they were all like animals. They were just they were just like on the verge of rage at every freaking sentence, every word, every moment. Like you could do no good in their eyes. And so the main one was just really adamant about this diet, like full time and he'd been on it for years. And I was like, look, man, something's not right here. You know, I'm telling you, I'm not trying to be a dick or a jerk. I know this is like your big thing and this is what you do. It becomes their life. It literally, I'm going to just say it because a lot of fad diets actually over the years, they actually do. They become like a cult or like people who abuse drugs. It's like, well, if you're not on them, then you have to get on them. If you're going to hang around with our group, like you have to become, you have to do their diet or their freaking drugs or whatever. So I started researching this and it doesn't take long on Google and YouTube to find out what, what this diet does. And so because of my background, I figured out really quick, I was like, oh shit, what it's doing is it's locking you out of your larger human brain, your compassionate brain, and it's shoving you down in the fight or flight reptilian brain. So like it says in here, it says, um, it, number one, it's survival mode. And number two, this can produce some favorable changes in metallic, metabolic patterns, meaning losing fat, potentially reversing several forms of early chronic disease, such as high blood pressure and prediabetes. And I also found research that um, this can help people with cancer. So number one, I'm coming to a bigger purpose slash point here. I'm trying to make a point or a purpose here. Uh, and number two, I, this is a red flag. If someone is on the keto diet, I would literally see that as a red flag for narcissism. And I'll explain why in a second here. I think this is really, really important. Now, here's the deal. Um, I mean, it sounds good. You're going to lose fat. You're going to lose weight. You're going to, um, you know, it helps with high blood pressure and prediabetes. But here's the thing you got to understand as I began, began to look into the research, the recommended time limit, limit, keyword limit, 
to be on this diet was something like five to eight weeks or eight to 12 weeks or something like that, something very close to that. And it was for people that were freaking dying, people that were, you know, had diabetes, blood, high blood pressure, and people that had cancer. And even those doctors say, hey, you're only supposed to be on this diet for a limited amount of time. It was never meant to be a year round freaking diet. Now, a lot of people, will, yeah, but Mike, but a lot of those UFC fighters and, and boxers and mixed martial artists, etc., around the world, they're, they're using this diet. It's very, very effective. I'm like, yeah, but those people are preparing themselves to step into a ring to beat the shit out of each other. I know. I used to, I cut weight for like 15, 18 years because I was in boxing, kickboxing, and wrestling. So year round, I was cutting weight for one sport or another. I know exactly what you're talking about. But here's the difference. They're only on the damn diet for four to six weeks to cut weight right before the fight. Maybe eight weeks. That's it. And then immediately after they weigh in and make the weight, what do they do? They go carb out. They go buy pizzas. They go, they go buy donuts. Like, uh, if you know a guy named Patty Pimlet from England, he is very famous for doing this diet and then losing massive weight. And then what does he do? He pigs out and he gains so much weight that people are like, man, I don't know if it's healthy to gain that much weight back. Because he like gets overweight, like in a very, like a bad way. But here's my point. These fighters, these competitors, they're not doing this diet for two, three, four, five years, or even six months, or even three or four months. They're doing it for the, the you know, the minimum amount of time, and then they get off of it, and then they go back to normal eating. And yes, you're going to want to be in your reptilian brain if you're going to get into a freaking really intense fight. So I understand that. But afterwards, you want to come out of that to be a normal functioning human being. I think the thing that really freaked me out was how there's this entire group of people that, and not only that, but even my client years ago, seven, six, seven years ago, they were just like, you got to get on this diet. You gotta, and they, they, would, they would buy you products. They would give you products. They'd say, here, try this. They, you go out the door. No, no, I'm going to order for you. It just lets you know. You should try it out. And you're just going, dude, it's, it's like a drug dealer just trying to push drugs. And you're like, whoa, bro, like back off. And then when you got an entire group of people doing this, you're just kind of like, man, this is just too fucking extreme. It's like, back off. Like, what are you doing? It's a damn cult. Now, I don't think that way for UFC fighters or MMA fighters who do it for a per an actual purpose. You know, this is a, I understand why they, or even a, a high school or college wrestler, I completely understand why you would do this diet for six to eight weeks, not a lifestyle. So all this whole narcissism thing just kind of blew up around the world and I was studying it every night for two, three, four hours, just watching video after video, learning from these doctors and reading, you know, all these articles and just everything I could get my hands on literally for three years. And the way they describe the way it affects you on a social level and, and a brain level of, uh, you know, personality level, like, I'm like, man, that's exactly like when the, when the, the artery uh, lowers when you're in a, in a when you're literally in survival mode, like you're fighting for your life. So then I had this aha moment of, oh, geez, this is exactly what I work with. I'm teaching men how to open up that artery to open up to their larger human brain so they can relax and be more comfortable to be around and can communicate in the right brain social way so they can connect with women and relate to women and understand women. And so there can be like a flow and back and forth understanding between the two of them. So at that point, I was ver made very aware that this is not a healthy diet to be on for more than six to eight weeks. Okay, you really shouldn't go past that. So I'm not against the keto diet. I'm against it being a full year round freaking lifestyle where you just don't get off the diet. That's not going to be healthy for you, and especially on a social level. And you also have to remember for the time that you are on the diet, if you're a UFC fighter, mixed martial artist, or collegiate wrestler, etc., I can understand. Yeah, you're going to be edgy. You're going to be on the verge of wanting to fight, and but it's only going to be for a period of time until you, you know, you loot, you uh, make weigh-ins, and then boom, you go back to regular eating. But for a normal human being, that's that's just not a functional way to go to work, to be in business, to be around people. It's just not normal. And you got to remember, fighters are generally around other fighters and coaches and trainers, and everyone understands what's going on. So I became very aware that people that were on this diet, because my, my question became like, wait, 
were they already a narcissist and that's what's causing them to be on this ultra diet of ultra skinniness and low fat and look at me, look at me, or did it make them that way? And the answer is both. Of course, a narcissist is going to be attracted to a diet like this that, that burns that burns fat and lowers weight, etc., etc. So, of course, it, it attracts the narcissist. It's also the other way around. When you, Whenever you're put into survival mode, you're put into the same reptilian brain that the narcissist lives in. So, you are going to be what they call, oh, God, there's NPD, and then there's like you, they call it having narcissistic traits, which basically means you're a narcissist or, or you're being a narcissist. So it answers the question, you know, why did the chicken cross the road and did the egg come first or did the chicken come first? And the answer is yes. So it really wasn't the research that convinced me. I could tell by the people's skin color, like their, their lethargy, they just, it was not, it wasn't just that, but you could tell on the internal level, the kidneys and their liver, like something was in the, and even their brain, like this is not healthy. This is not a long-term functioning thing. It's not good for the body. So I started doing research and I started looking into it. And there's a lot of people that are really skeptical about this diet that says, Hey, this is not a healthy long-term, uh, uh, answer for losing weight. So I told this one client of mine who was a narcissist, like, hey man, you really have to get off this diet. You're not a fighter. You're not a trainer. You're not one of those people that step in the ring. This really is not healthy long term. I really think it would do you well to get off this diet and just start eating fruits and vegetables and don't worry about your carb intake and eat healthy, you know, just eat healthy. And of course they said no, blah, blah, blah. And the reason why I was saying this was because they were very much locked down their low reptilian brain. I'm like, look, the whole purpose of my course is to open you up to consciousness and you've got to open up that artery in order to come out of that lower brain into your higher regions inside your brain, your skull, literally. And here's the, f the funny thing. One of the people that was on this diet that I had really warned said, hey, you need to get off it. They, they were... A professional at doing at teaching nutrition and stuff and they were just so adamant about this diet and so because of the craziness and a realization that they were a narcissist I just blocked them out of my life I blocked them on every social media emails phones everything of course they're following this channel on a fake uh, social media channel be, uh, that they made because they told me they told me later in fact five months later when they showed up at my door out of, out of the clear blue sky and here's the one thing, they did not look healthy. And I was looking at this person like, man, something is not right with this person. And I told them that. And he said, you know, when you told me about the keto diet and how it's not healthy for you long term, I was like, yeah, he said, honestly, dude, he goes, he damaged either it was his thyroid or his, um, oh, God, the pineal gland. I forget which one he said. And it caused all kinds of problems with his metabolism and all kinds of stuff. And he was having some major physical issues was seeing uh, i think he said he was seeing doctors or someone to help him so it's i'm just kind of looking i'm like well you should have had a little bit more of an open mind to what i was saying to you because i was actually trying to help now here's the deal this was a person that it was a professional coach when it came to the keto diet they literally taught people how to do this diet and they were just so sold and so adamant and so blindly you know on this cult like diet that they just couldn't see they couldn't open their mind and that's and that's exactly the problem as it says here it puts you in survival mode well what does that mean it means that artery gets very narrow it, it basically closes almost all the way not not completely what that does is it shoves your awareness down into the reptilian brain now you're functioning like a chimpanzee like a wild rage filled angry frustrated animal the littlest thing will trigger you and here's the other thing. They literally aren't open-minded. They can't because the right brain is the open-minded brain. The left brain is in the box and the reptilian brain is even worse. You're literally closed-minded to anything other than what you see already. So if you're going to do the ketogenic diet, please don't do for more than six to eight weeks. And definitely don't do it if you're going to come train with me because my whole course is opening that artery. And if you're doing the ketogenic keto keto diet i'll call it it's not going to work because the idea of the the diet is to close the artery so when you open the artery you open up to consciousness at the higher regions of your your higher brain 
You know, another warning I want to give you guys, you run into these people that are, oh, I'm a professional, I've got a degree in, I don't know, nutrition or health or, you know, whatever, and, and they probably do, I'm not denying anything like that. But here's what I've seen as I grew up from teens into my mid-30s is, because it happened to me at a at a gym where I was really getting into powerlifting, and my I was just massively gaining power and strength it was pretty incredible what i was doing but what happened is then they came out and said hey you should try this pill and you could buy it at the vitamin store it was over the counter and it had mao huang in it and you're like oh it's all natural it comes from china it's a plant in china that doctors uh give to their patients so i'm like oh it's a plant it's 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 natural oh okay well i'll do it then here's the deal people that stuff is freaking speed. It's Mother Nature's speed. I went to an acupuncturist after about, I don't know, six months of being on that stuff. Because I was like, this stuff, there's something's not right. But it was hard to get off of. So the guys at the gym were taking like four and five pills right before working out. And I'm even now, luckily, I was one of these people. Like, I knew my body. I, I'm sensitive to medications. So. I was like, you know, I'm going to take one. And I was like, holy shit, this just jacked me through the roof. I couldn't, I literally, the first time I did, I couldn't sleep for 48 hours. It was insane. And then I thought, you know what, I'm just going to take like 10% of it. So I would open the capsule and, you know, but even that, man, it would, that would keep me up all night long too. It was like, holy shit. So I went to this acupuncturist on, on, I got Nogira Street in San Francisco. I think I'm saying that wrong. It's been a long time. So this guy was from Shanghai, China. He was the best in the world, Dr. Chen. Everybody recommended this guy. And he looked at me and he did my, you know, he's like, holy crap, because your heartbeat and your blood pressure is really high. He goes, are you on any kind of like stimulant or drugs? I'm like, no, I don't do drugs, sir. And he goes, well, you're on something. And I go, well, what do you mean? He goes, are you on any kind of like energy pills? I'm like, well, yeah, I'm doing this stuff. And I proudly said it because he was from China. I'm on Mao Huang. And he goes, no, no, you can't do that. I'm like, what? And my girlfriend was there at the time uh, listening to this. And he goes, no, no. He goes, he goes, the only reason we give this to people is when they're dying. And I'm like, uh-huh. He goes, he goes, look, China is so big. You could be, I think it was like a 12-hour flight or 15-hour flight to get from one side to the other. He goes, we only give it to them to keep them alive so their children, you know, can fly across country for, old, you know, for the, their, when they're old, super old. Like, you know, 60, 70, 80 years old. He goes, we're just trying to keep them alive so their children and their grandchildren can fly across the country and say goodbye to them. He goes, that's the only time we use it. And he said, because it's not good for you. He, he said, it's like speed. I was like, oh. And I and I, I, I kind of defending myself, not really defending it, because I was like, I was already sold. Like, hey, I'm going to come off this stuff. But the first thing out of my mouth said, well, yeah, but they sell it over the counter at the vitamin store. He goes, I don't care. He goes, they shouldn't be doing that. And here's the kicker. I found out later that it wasn't actually from the plant. It was a synthetic chemical form of, of, a, of uh, Mao Huang. And then they had this other stuff called ephedra and ephedrine that was over the... And when I say over the counter, I don't mean the pharmacy. I mean the freaking vitamin store. Never in a million years would I have thought they would have been selling stuff. Now that stuff was outlawed, at least in the state of California. And I think Ma Huang was also outlawed. I don't know if it's outlawed in the United States, but I don't see it anymore. I haven't heard of it. But then again, I'm not powerlifting. So I, but I don't think they're selling it on the count, um, over the counter at uh, vitamin stores anymore. So here's my point. Stop. Stop listening to the so-called experts. You have got to freaking stop it. You need to start researching. And the other thing you need to do is listen to your body. When you take something in, did it make you go nuts? Were you over the board? Were you not sleeping? You need to pay attention to this stuff. How did it affect you physically? There's a lot of people with college degrees in these fields and even doctors, even medical professionals. And I got to tell you something, something I've learned over the years is stop listening to people. Oh, it's all natural. Oh, it's all this. And oh, dude, let me tell you something. Last six, five, six, seven years, all of these people that were on the keto diet were just this. Oh, it's all natural. It's all this. And then I would show them like articles like this and they'd like, oh, don't listen to those people. They don't know what they're doing. 
Because the thing about it is they don't want to hear the truth. They're hooked. They're addicted. This is their drug. And boom, I'm going to do the keto diet or I'm going to do this over-the-counter pill. I don't care how it's affecting me. It's getting me the results I want. And that's all I care about. So they're going to sell you the freaking moon in any way, shape, or form. They're going to lie. They're going to cheat. They're going to steal. They're going to do anything. So here's the deal. You've really got to be careful who you listen to. And start researching stuff. Spend time watching YouTube videos, Google, etc., etc. So luckily, I was only doing 10% of one capsule, and that was one of the saving graces. And I said six months. It wasn't six months. It was probably about three months because that's when I was like, something is just not right here. So luckily, I'm really in tune with my body. I listened to my body, and I was like, this is not right. And luckily, I was very smart and only did 10%. But here's the kicker. Another thing that I do, I watch other people. I won't do something. I'll sit back for a year or more and watch other people make the mistakes on this new fad diet, this new fad pill, or whatever. So the last thing I want to say about this whole keto diet and narcissist connection is... It was just really weird when you're surrounded by people and they were all on this diet and they were all just adamantly pushing this diet for weeks and we, and you're like, dude, what the fuck? Like, back off. So, is this a tool for narcissists uh, to use to um, control you? Well, yes, of course. I mean, this, like, I remember back in the 70s when I was a little, little kid when they were talking about, the, you know, the, the group Est and then what was the one the guy on a cult and all the things that they did to people when they go to these seminars is they would basically tell them like, Hey, just be vegetarian. Don't eat any, don't eat any meat. Don't eat any whatever. And so it would, it causes your brain to shut down. And so here's again, here's the deal. When you go into survival mode, again, you're in the lower reptilian brain. And because of that, you can't see the bigger picture. You can't see the manipulations. You can't see the little slick things they're doing. You don't catch on to the lies. You can't put the pieces together. Because remember, the right brain is the brain that puts the pieces of the puzzle together so you can see the bigger picture, meaning you're seeing what these people are doing. And they don't want that. They don't want they don't want you to see that they're that they're gaslighting you. They don't want you to catch them in their lies. They don't want you to see any of this stuff that they're doing so if they can get you onto this diet and they can close that that reptilian uh, that artery to, to block your higher consciousness your greater awareness you're screwed and they're and they're going to be they're going to have a heyday with you and just humiliate you shame you beat you down destroy your self-esteem and your confidence and everything and so yeah that is absolutely at least when it comes to narcissists they want you on that diet you know i'm not saying everyone that takes the diet is a narcissist i'm not saying that but when it comes to dealing with narcissists, this basically blinds you and you can't see what people are doing to you. So beware when it comes to the keto diet. So my recommendation is watch and learn. All right, guys. God bless you guys. Remember, click subscribe, click that like button, make a comment, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.